of William Hill, the home of betting. Well, hello from Ascot. Day four of the Royal Meeting. John Ivan Duke from Bookmakers, William Hill, alongside me to look ahead to the action. And John, so far it's been the Ryan Moore show. How much has it cost you? Well, it's costing an awful lot of money, I'll tell you that, Sam. Um, you know, if Dissolution had won the last yesterday, that would have been a loss of two and a half million pounds. So you can see how much the run-ups were on Ryan Moore yesterday. Um, we may have got that one turned over, but he's costing us a fortune. Every time he, he rides a winner, it's averaging a million pound payout. It's an awful lot of money to be spending out. And, and really, this week has been uh, one which punters can fill up their betting accounts. Uh, and hopefully, over the next few weeks, um, they might give some of it back. <laughs> and potentially today, he uh, could cost the bookers even more some really well fancied mounts. But not got a ride in the first race, the Albany Stakes coming up at 2.30. Richard Hughes and Richard Hannon, they're still looking for their first win of the week. And they've got the favourite here, Illuminate. Yeah, you know, Illuminates uh, an interesting horse, uh, won at Salisbury last time, but the two for me that, that were catching the eye, and certainly the, the one that's been backed is Laxfield Road, 6-1 to one from 7-1. to one. Actually, the other one for Wesley Ward back at the ranch, that one's drifted out to 7s from 6s, but I think the two Wesley Ward runners are the ones to beat in this race, um, going against Illuminate the favourite. Um, in terms of strength, I'd say that the one ridden by Frankie de Torre is, is certainly the more popular of the two Wesley Ward runners. Okay, so that's Laxfield Road, Frankie de Torre uh, in the Albany, proving popular with punters. Moving on to the 3.05, the King Edward seventh, And this race uh, is one with Ryan, Ryan Moore's got a, a well-fancied runner, um, Old Man River. Beat, well beaten in the Guineas, well beaten in the Dante, but he's coming here pretty short price is that just the more factor yeah i do think that there is a more factor with it um stravagante is the one to beat according to the market five to two i was impressed with the way that it ran at epsom last time certainly didn't look like any old handicapper um won very nicely frankie de on board though you'd expect some popularity with the frankie factor as well but ryan moore's in such strong form that four to one at the moment that might well go and get shorter balios has been back for david simcock that's seven to two from fours uh, so Balios perhaps a, a little bit bigger price then in the King Edward the seventh. Moving on to the 340, the uh, Coronation Cup. And this one, again, it's all about Ryan Moore and, and Wesley Ward, isn't it? Hootenanny. I think Hootenanny is very much the one to beat. You know, this is a horse who's won uh, at the Breeders' Cup. It, you have to have a good horse to do that. Um, Frankie de Torre must be absolutely gutted he's not riding. But he's not on a bad horse either uh, with Tendu, um, who obviously uh, is dropping back in trip, was beaten over course and distance by Lamarto. Uh, earlier in the year, Lamarto's actually pushed out in price six to one now from five to one earlier in the day. Uh, obviously, a course and distance winner loves quick, quick ground. You can m certainly make a case for Henry Candy's runner. Uh, Anthem Alexander pushed out in price thirteen to two this morning. Now up to fifteen to two. Again, another one who should love the ground. And Tiggy Wiggy, um, a horse who seems to be ever popular, uh, a superb two-year-old. Not quite uh, been able to get off the winning mark this year but I thought ran a very good race in the, the thousand guineas um, an exciting filly who's seven to one now from six to one this morning so an even bigger price that's just simply because of all the money for Hootenanny who shortened up three to one favorite now from five to one and could it be a big race double for Ryan Moore he's also on the favorite found in the coronation stakes well for the bookmakers you think uh, that will be definitely cheering against anything in the race apart from found you know everything else in the race will pretty much be running for us if Hootenanny wins that previous race the Commonwealth Cup then found I mean goodness knows how short it could start uh, seven to four favorite at the moment um, Irish rookies been pushed out out to 14 to one I think that's a big price about a horse who was second in the French uh, thousand guineas a Vader who won that race is three to one in the betting whilst Lucida at fours the big betting race of the day is the five o'clock, the Duke of Edinburgh handicap, really competitive uh, race this, but lots of strong support for Igida in the uh, podcast yesterday that we recorded. Mm -hmm. And also price-wise tip today, is, is he being backed in your shops? Yeah, Igida is popular at the front end of the market at seven to four favourites. Um, obviously he's gone up nine pounds for winning at Doncaster last time out, but certainly seems to be one who is well ahead of the handicapper at the moment. Um, Dashing star, a front runner, Ryan Moore on board. Can he get a big winner in, a, in the handicap uh, today? Well, certainly punters siding with him. Nine to one from 12 to one has been supported. The other one uh, who's come for money is Mark Johnson's Waters Meat. Uh, who's been in cracking form this term, winning four of five starts. It's 10 to 1 from 12s. And what about the final race of the day, the Queen's Files 535? Anything being backed here? 
Well, I think one of the interesting moves here is the Queen's horse coming out of the betting. That was quite high up, around about 11 to 2 when Fabricate was uh, withdrawn. Um, Aloft is just nipped in to 7 to 4 from 2 to 1, as partly due to the, the fact that Fabricate has come out. Again, Bantry Bay is probably the more popular of the Aidan O'Brien pair at the moment, actually. 4 to 1 from 6 is perhaps... Uh, Joseph O'Brien can get a winner uh, on the card here at Royal Ascot. Yarrow's been back for Sir Michael Stout. Pat Smullins up on board, 7-1 to one from 10s. Those are the interesting ones in the last. Are these ones going to be shorter if uh, it's been a good day so far for Bally Doyle? Well, let's just say if Ryan Moore starts piling in the winners, you won't be finding 7-4 to four about a loft. Okay, well, many thanks, uh, John. And do stay up to date with all the action here at Royal Ascot on racingpace.com.